Welcome back. Live to Seoul. I'm Brian Williams. As we continue our coverage of the games and the Ben Johnson story, we can now confirm as of about six minutes ago, Ben Johnson left Seoul on a Korean airliner bound for New York City. All arrangements were made by the Canadian Olympic Association. Ben Johnson has left Korea on a flight for New York City. Right now, we're going to go out to boxing. Scotty Olson, the Bulldog from Edmonton, is uh, standing by. But before we do that, we have a new update. On the Canadian ASAP. press conference right now. Here is Carol Ann Lethrin, our chef de mission. Information in that letter indicating that we should be present at 10 a.m. that morning at the doping control center for the opening of the B sample. And further, that we had the opportunity, if we chose, to appear before the IOC Medical Commission at 10 o'clock that same evening. At 7 a.m. that morning, the chief medical officer and myself met with the team leader for track and field in our village and the coach of that athlete, Charlie Francis. We discussed the letter and we discussed the process. At 10 a.m., the chief medical officer left to go to the B sample opening with the coach and the team leader. That procedure took three hours. The first two hours they discussed with members and representatives of the IOC Medical Commission uh, some of the issues surrounding the case. They then proceeded to receive information regarding the actual substance that was in the sample and to the B sample being opened. They arrived back at the village at 1.30 p.m. At 2.15 p.m., the Chief Medical Officer and myself left to meet with senior officials of the Canadian Olympic Association. The deliberations that followed will actually be addressed and detailed by our President, Roger Jackson. Following the deliberations that Dr. Jackson will give to you, we left the Schiller Hotel, the Chief Medical Officer and myself at 3.30 a.m., met with Ben and Ben's mother and his sister, as well as his coach and his manager. We gave them the full details of the hearing, the results of that hearing. We received back Ben's gold medal from him, and we had at that time the unfortunate task of removing Ben from the Canadian team. Ben is now en route back home. I want to close with a couple of comments. Yesterday and today have been an incredibly difficult time both for me as head of the Canadian team and for those of my colleagues who were aware of the events that were unfolding. In particular, it's a, a very, very sad day and a very, very sad situation in the Olympic Village at this time. We're acutely aware of how devastating this news will be to millions of people. The people of Canada and Jamaica in particular have been elated since the 100 meter final. And today that joy will be replaced by pain. I wish there was something that I could say or we could say that would relieve that pain, but there is not. And I assure you, though, that the heartbreak is shared by all of us who are part of the Canadian Olympic team. Thank you. Marie Zellin. For the French press for uh, added commentary, this is Marie Zellin. The uh, results of the, we were very proud of this athlete during the weekend and now, and all of Canada now, and Jamaica. Uh, it is very difficult to comment or to add to this. We, we are, we are concerned consternation uh, among us, and it, certainly, not, certainly not that the Canadian Association of those events that take place because our control, anti-doping, is one of the uh, surest, and we regret the incident, of course. Dr. Jackson. Good morning. I just have a couple of comments to make perhaps at this time and uh, then certainly as with everyone else we'll be prepared to try to answer your questions. 
it's working now. It goes without saying that uh, we are profoundly affected by this circumstance within our Canadian sport community. And as Caroline has correctly pointed out, uh, we have concern not only with our Canadian team still here in the village, but also with regard to our own sports circumstances in Canada. Caroline indicated that I would give some explanation of the process through yesterday afternoon and into the evening with the Medical Commission. We are very grateful for the procedures and process that allowed us to present the views of our National Olympic Committee to the Medical Commission last evening. We met with them at 10 p.m. We made a presentation based on a number of interviews that unfolded throughout yesterday afternoon and into the early part of the evening. As Carol Ann has mentioned, we discussed the circumstances with Ben Johnson, with his coach, with other Canadian officials who were present during the doping control process following Ben's victory. Uh, the arguments that we presented essentially were based on the assertions of Ben Johnson and his coach that he had not taken this substance and that there could have been a substance placed in one of his drinking samples prior to him providing the urine sample. It is also clear to us that there were some irregularities in the processing, particularly with regard to a number of unauthorized people in and about the doping area. And some of those officials, in fact, were Canadians who went in without proper accreditation to that area. We made our presentation uh, as the IOC press release has indicated based mostly on those arguments. Uh, the Medical Commission, I am convinced, gave very thorough and considerate judgment to our position. And uh, you all know the conclusion of their, of their uh, deliberations. We very much regret the embarrassment of this situ situation to Canadian sport. We have a very strong moral position concerning sport and doping. And as far as Ben Johnson is concerned or any other athlete that is caught in a doping situation, there will be appropriate hearings and further action back home in Canada after we return. I can't give you the details of that because that's a process that unfolds uh, later on. We are also very much regret the embarrassment that we might have caused the International Olympic Committee and the superb organizers of these Olympic Games in Seoul. Thank you. Jean Guy Wallet. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. Jean Guy Wallet speaking. It is a very sad moment for track and field, both in Canada and in the world. The Canadian Track and Field Association is deeply saddened by this situation as one of its high-profile athletes has been stripped of a world record and a gold medal. It is a disaster for our sports, and the Canadian Track and Field Association shares in the pain of the Canadian population and wishes to reassure the citizens of Canada that it will deal with this matter within its power and authority. De plus, l'Association canadienne d'athlétisme va assumer son rôle et ses responsabilités pour ce tragique incident. Merci. Questions? Can you confirm us how many times Ben Johnson was tested this year, 1988? In the period since February 21st, 1987, Ben Johnson, both at the domestic and international competition has been tested eight times, not taking into account the one here at the Seoul Olympic Games. 
Would you please specify who your questions are for? I'd like to address this to Carol Ann. Could you tell us how Ben reacted when you broke this news to him at 3.30 a.m.? Yeah, my, my reading of Ben's reaction to the news was that, number one, he was shocked in, and completely in a state of shock, and I would suspect at that point in time still did not comprehend the information totally. Question to the Chef de Mission. We gather that uh, Ben Johnson had a conversation from the lobby of the hotel last night at 11 p.m. with the IOC Medical Commission. Can you tell us what the content of that conversation was? I'm not aware of any conversation that Ben Johnson had with the IOC Medical Commission, so I'm sorry I can't provide you with any details. Michael Farber. Yes, doctor, could, doctor, could you tell us, in your opinion, would this anabolic steroid have to have been taken within the past three to five days? The information handed down to us by the IOC Medical Commission was that, in fact, it was impossible to determine exactly the duration or at the point at which the medication was administered. Uh, excuse me. Does Paul Caesar to a vision of Brazil? Ah, excuse me. Question to that gentleman. Uh, I didn't understand your name. Excuse me. Z Sie haben, äh, Sie haben gesagt eben, äh, dass äh, Ben Johnson des Weltrekordes und seiner Goldmedaille beraubt worden sei. Halten ja. Sie die Entscheidung der Medizinischen Kommission des IOC und des Vorstands der IO, des IOC für ungerechtfertigt? Sie haben gesagt, Ben Johnson sei seines Weltrekordes und der Goldmedaille beraubt worden. Halten Sie die Entscheidung der Medizinischen Kommission und des Vorstands des IOC für ungerechtfertigt? You'll have to ask the question any time. If I could. Did you state that Ben Johnson was robbed of his world record and medal? No, no, I, I didn't say that he was robbed from the medal. He was stripped for the medal. Excuse me? Stripped. Removed. Removed. This was the, this was the translation in German. <laughs> Bad translation. Yes, sir. <laughs> right here in the yellow, please. Go yeah, ahead. Okay. Uh, television of Brazil. Uh, at the day of the race, did Ben, or his coach, he came to you and said that he had taken any uh, medicine or whatever, but he wasn't feeling all right that day? Did he did that? The answer is no. Hey, I have one question to the gentleman from the Track and Field Association. I understand that at your national championships, you had a policy of testing two out of three uh, medal winners by lot. And it so happened that Ben Johnson drew the lot not to be tested after the 100 meters. Will you change that policy now? Your statement is accurate. At the 1988 National Championships held in Ottawa, random sampling did occur for doping and control for the three finalists in the 100 meters. As uh, the draw occurred, the number two and number three finishers were the ones selected for doping control. It is obviously a matter that uh, has been in place and a procedure that has been in place within the doping control procedures of the Canadian Track and Field Association for a number of years. It is fair to say, in answering your question, that certainly that it will be appropriate for the Canadian Track and Field Association to review its procedure in this regard, the very same way that we constantly review doping control measures in light of either Canadian or world development in this regard. 
Question right here. I have two questions. Um, if you said Ben Johnson was tested eight times from February seven, um, 87 or until now, exclusive of this time, when was the last time prior to this? At the World Championships in Rome last year. That he was not tested in Zurich, is that correct? In verifying our file back at the office this morning prior to my coming here, we are not in possession of information as it pertains to doping having occurred in either the competitions he participated in Zurich or in Cologne. We are presently trying to secure that information. And to Roger Jackson, were you satisfied with the Medical Commission's argument that the profile of the steroid was such that last minute tampering could not have caused that result of the test? I, I, I do not have the biochemistry experience to be able to comment on that question. I'm sorry. Can someone comment on it? Can I would echo Dr. Jackson's sentiment that we have been singularly impressed with the scientific laboratories available to us here in South Korea. And the work of Dr. Beckett and Dornicke have confirmed that there is evidence that there has been, in the urine profile, there is evidence that in fact there has been use of some type of steroid in the more distant past. Lady in the back. Thank you. Susan Cardinal, Canadian Broadcasting. Question for Keller, Carol Ann Letherin. What evidence do you have that Ben Johnson is not solely responsible for testing positive and taking anabolic steroids? At this time, we have no evidence whatsoever, one way or the other. But I understand from Canadian Olympic Association officials that you believe there is another party involved. I want to know why. I'll have to turn that question over to the Canadian Olympic Association. Roger Jackson. The, re the reason we pursued that line of reasoning was because the coach and the athlete indicated they were not using steroids. And the next obvious question is then how did it get into your system? Um, they expressed their views that a third party could have added the substance to the drinking fluids and they led, then led us through a series of possible opportunities where that might have happened. Why do you believe the coach and Ben Johnson? I don't think that uh, those of us that went through the process know what to believe, to be honest with you. Um, I think uh, Ben Johnson and his coach are probably more knowledgeable than anybody as to what has happened. We have attempted in the, period, the short period of time yesterday to try to clarify the circumstance in order to try to provide the opportunity for us to help him present his case to the Medical Commission which had already determined that he was tested positive. So the evidence in effect was there on the table against him. And we, in the Olympic Association, attempted to support him to the degree that we could. And last night when we made our presentation, I think we made a very fair presentation uh, based on the specific evidence that we could put our fingers on that could demonstrate some reasonable doubt about some of the process. The Medical Commission has a responsibility to review our best data and to review their best data and to come to a conclusion. And their conclusion was that uh, the individual uh, had been, had this not only the substance in his urine, but their belief, I guess, from what you've heard, is that he had been uh, possibly using steroids for some time. Back here. Yes, Mike Tully of UPI. Question for the chef de mission. I'm wondering if, uh, in view of all the confusion that we have here this morning, if you would tell us explicitly whether, to what extent you feel that justice has been done in this case. I think Dr. Jackson has actually addressed that for you. We, we have followed all of the steps available to us and taken advantage of all of the opportunities, both 
the Canadian Olympic team here in Seoul and also the Canadian Olympic Association as, as Dr. Jackson indicated. And I think we have presented as much data and information and received as much as we can at this time. Dr. Jackson may wish to elaborate further. Question over here, please. Um, Dr. Jackson. Dr. Jackson. Um, other Canadian athletes were tested before they left uh, for Vancouver. Can you explain why Ben Johnson wasn't tested after his selection to the team? Uh, I can't answer that question specifically because our National Olympic Committee is not directly involved with the testing program. The program is conducted by the Fitness and Amateur Sport Directorate of the Government of Canada, which provides the financing for it. It's undertaken through the direction and leadership of the Sports Medicine Council of Canada and with the cooperation of the individual amateur sport organizations. Uh, maybe track and field could give you a better answer to why certain athletes were or others weren't, but I don't know the specifics of that one. El president, el presidente. Le produit, le produit interdit de uh, Excuse me, uh, Paul Dupre or Jean Guy Wallet. In answering, in answering the question earlier, as it pertained to random sampling at the national championships. The Canadian Track and Field Association did conduct doping control for all of the events at its national championships. And in this regard, thereafter, brought forward its nominations to the team. So, random sampling did not allow, permit, the way it is handled as per our procedure, for Ben Johnson to be uh, recipient of doping control as the as I've already explained the number two and three finishers were as were finishers in other events so yes doping control has occurred for the large majority of the Canadian track and field association athletes that are part of this Canadian Olympic team here in Seoul lady in the pink and then you sir could I just clarify two factual things that we have been told uh, one is the Director General of um, Sport Canada told us that they were certain that Ben Johnson had been tested in February of 1988. The other gentleman here just said the last time you were certain he was tested was the World Championships in November of 87. So which of those two dates is correct? The, that is actually accurate. I was under the impression that the question directed earlier dealt with testing at an outdoor competition. The answer to your point is the statement by the on the part of the Director General of Sport Canada is accurate. The competition was held in Ottawa and it was the Winter National Championships in Ottawa in uh, February 1988. And the second fact is could you tell us how much funding Ben Johnson as a a card holder would receive from Sport Canada? The current allocation of and benefit of uh, financial assistance benefit accrued to Ben Johnson as an A card athlete, as for all of the A carded athletes uh, of any national sport organization in Canada from Sport Canada, is $650 a month. Thank you. Yes, sir. Perez de Rozas, El País de España. Es el presidente del Comité Olímpico Coreano ha presentado la dimisión por eh, el escándalo habido en un combate tras un combate de boxeo. Se han descubierto ya, con el caso de Ben Johnson, siete casos positivos de doping. No parece ser que ninguno de los presidentes implicados en estos casos vayan a presentar su dimisión. ¿Alguno de ustedes se ha planteado abandonar el cargo tras el descubrimiento de este positivo dado que es el ejemplo de todo el deporte mundial I'm having too much fun to resign <laughs> Back here Go ahead My question My question is to the uh, chef de mission or anyone else on the top table who may have spoken to Ben Johnson since this, no, this became public. I'm very interested to know how Ben Johnson is taking it. Now, you said that when you spoke to him, he was completely in a state of shock. Could you expand on that, ex exactly how that state of shock was? Was it shock that he'd been caught out or shock that 
the sample head come back positive and anyone else who may have spoken to him we'd really like to know how Ben's feeling since I'm not Ben Johnson I'm going to give you my interpretation of what I saw and and uh, as I indicated earlier he appeared to be in a complete state of shock and not comprehending the information uh, Ben was not able to discuss or articulate anything at that moment so exactly what of the information affected him in what way we don't know um, he just was not able to speak and it was a, a very difficult moment for all of us over here if if Ben Johnson was using anabolic steroids as part of a training program at any time it's difficult to imagine that being done without his coach being aware of it he has been stripped of his gold medal has any disciplinary action been taken against his coach and if not why not At this point, the Canadian Track and Field Association has taken no whatsoever disciplinary measures with his coach. The Canadian Track and Field Association has a process by which it does review such behavior simply because the anti-doping policy statement of the Canadian Track and Field Association is quite clear that encouragement if evidence documents it of such practice is unacceptable and not tolerated upon return to canada the canadian track and field association its uh, doping solutions committee as well as the board of directors intends to review the status of ben johnson's coach with the canadian track and field association but today, to this point, here in Seoul, at the Olympic Games, no disciplinary measures have been taken. A follow-up, if I may? Uh, ben Johnson. All right. We are covering live the news conference at the main press center here with Canadian Olympic officials. You saw Dr. Roger Jackson, the gold medal winner from the last time the Games were here in the Orient in uh, rowing with George Hungerford in 1964, Carol Ann Lethran, the chef de mission. Now, we will continue to record that so you will not miss anything. We're also going to show you Scotty Olson's fight. But here now is the footage of Ben Johnson leaving the airport, actually arriving and then leaving the airport within the last 30 minutes here in Seoul. <laughs> All right, that was within the last 30 minutes out at the airport. Again, Ben has left on a Korean airline flight for Kennedy International Airport in New York City. Now let's take you back live to the press conference as we continue to cover this story because Question of its continuing here. importance. Right there, to my left. My question is for the chef de mission first and then the representatives of the governing body, the Canadian Track and Field Association. What economic uh, and funding implications do these, uh, this, uh, does this suspension or decision have on the future of Canadian sports and for the Canadian Track and Field Association rep representatives uh, what, what are these implications directly economically uh, in um, relation with sponsorships for the association? Well as Chef de Mission obviously your question doesn't relate to the Olympic team here in Seoul because that's a question for the future. Um, the Track and Field Association may wish to respond, but I also would like to point out to you that in our audience today, there are two representatives of the Federal Government of Canada, uh, Abby Hoffman, Director of Sport Canada, and Lyle McCoskey, the Assistant Deputy Minister. Uh, you may wish to identify them for a personal uh, interview at a later point in time, but the Track and Field Association may wish to comment in part at this moment. At this moment, Regarding the government funding, we don't have any indication that we have, we will have some cut, but we are certainly sure that at the sponsorship level, it will have a great impact. Uh, before I could, hello, before I could put the next question, I need to know which individual up there 
first broke the news to Ben Johnson that his uh, specimen was suspect and, and when? We're just conferring because it was either the team leader, Dave Lyons, or the coach, Charlie Francis, and, and we've, it was his coach, Charlie Francis, who broke the news of the A sample. So the very first indication that Ben had. Then, go ahead. Uh, the, the question that arises from that, I guess I didn't get the answer. Any was it Bill Stanish then who took the news to Charlie Francis? What I want to know is their initial reaction mm -hmm. to the news that it was suspect. I'm not understanding entirely whether they're saying that the sample itself was tampered with or the fluids that Ben drank was tampered with. Well, first of all, let me. I think you've got several things there. First of all, at what point did we meet with the, the coach and the team leader? At 7 a.m. on the Monday morning. Bill Stanish and myself met with the team leader, David Lyons, and Ben's coach, Charlie Francis. And those were the first two individuals we spoke with and shared the letter that we had received with him, or with them, rather. Generally, how... Excuse me, sorry, you're next. There's a question here, then you're next. Yes, did either um, Mr. Johnson or his coach make any specific allegations, name names, as to whom they believed may have tampered with the sample, and what fluids did Ben Johnson uh, ingest after running? Was it water, was it beer? Well, as Chef de Mission, I'll answer the first part of that and suggest to you that at no time did they make uh, any allegations to either of uh, us in the village who were responsible for this particular uh, issue. In terms of the fluids that he ingested, I think the Track and Field Association should comment on that. Maybe, maybe I could answer the question okay, because ahead, Canadian Track and Field was not present during part of our discussion yesterday when we raised this issue with uh, Charlie Francis and Ben Johnson. Uh, they indicated that Ben Johnson carried with him a container like a cycling water bottle with a black top on it that was with his equipment bag when he went to the start. The equipment bag containing the container was taken by the officials of Sluk as they do pick up the baskets, take them to the finish line. The bags were left unattended in the change room during the period of the race and the few minutes after the race before uh, Ben returned. He drank from that container several times apparently and he also drank several beers in the waiting room prior to passing his urine sample. There were individuals moving about in that waiting room, some drinking beer, and they are not certain what happened. And that's one of the difficulties of their argument. Uh, but they felt that there were enough possibilities of opportunity for this to occur. Bearing in Go ahead. Bearing in mind what you've just said about the people who were in the area who shouldn't have been there, how satisfied are you with the dope testing procedures at this Olympics? Up until this single episode, we have been most impressed. You must quite realize that this was the premier event of the entire Olympic Games, and crowd control was a very distinct problem. We have testimony to suggest that in an area where indeed only people with special doping passes are allowed, indeed that area was traversed by people that did not have such accreditation. That's a very grave concern to us. All right, as we come back live to our studios, Chris Cuthbert, who has called gymnastics for us, so you expected to be out at Synchro today. You've been at the Hilton Hotel. You've talked extensively with Larry Heidebrecht, as you did before the race. His agent, will you bring us up today, Chris? Well, Larry Heidebrecht has certainly uh, talked a lot about uh, something that we're going to hear a lot about in the next little while, the, the water bottle that Ben Johnson took to the race. Apparently, it was switched before the race, and Ben noticed that his water bottle had been changed. And perhaps therein lies the key to the whole uh, drug problem. Uh, we talked to Larry Heidebrecht just a few minutes ago at the Hilton Hotel, his first public announcement since watching the news conference that you're watching. And uh, the first thing he addressed was the water bottle issue. 
I didn't see the bottle initially. Uh, Dr. Astapan did, so obviously he was alarmed. Uh, I would have been alarmed. Anybody would have been alarmed uh, if they would have known that he brought back a bottle that wasn't his, and he, uh, you know, drank from the bottle. And of course, the following morning, uh, Sunday morning, his uh, original bottle shows up. Somebody brings it to the hotel. So uh, I, I don't know. Was his first reaction that it was the bottle or something in the bottle that? had caused this problem? Well, his first reaction was he, he didn't understand, you know, what was going on. And then when he thought about it a little bit, and obviously all of us were asking him, look, Ben, think, you know, what, you know, what happened? What was wrong? And, you know, did you take anything? Did you drink anything? You know, and, and then some of the information started to come out. So, Larry, what's your recourse now? I don't know if there is a recourse. We would just like to piece together uh, what really happened and, and uh, hopefully prove, if it's possible, uh, that somebody, uh, you know, I drugged his bottle, and uh, that's what caused this problem for him. Do you wish you'd cleaned out that bottle? Uh, would it help your case if you had any remnants of what was in that bottle that came back? No, it wouldn't have mattered because, uh, you know, whether you purposely would drink something that would have um, a steroid in it or, you know, if it's done accidentally, which is the case in this situation, that wouldn't matter as far as the test would still show what it showed. So it wouldn't really make any difference. Uh, I mean, how do you feel right now? I mean, uh, you must feel like a guy who's lost the lottery, too. <laughs> well, I mean, it's pretty obvious, uh, you know, Ben's um, uh, victory uh, was heralded throughout the world as, you know, a great accomplishment. So, naturally, as one who takes care of his business, um, you know, it's a devastating blow. But um, that aside, I just feel sorry for the man because he's, uh, you know, just a, a really... Uh, good person and, and a great athlete and uh, he didn't do anything wrong and, and he pays the price now. What's his state? Is he bitter, ashamed? Is he confused? Uh, how would you describe his reactions right now? Uh, ben never shows much emotion. He keeps things inside. He didn't have much to say at all. He just, you know, was disappointed and uh, but he didn't have much to say about it. Is it not true though there's a danger that he might not be able to compete now for 18 months under the IAAF rules? Uh, traditionally, uh, uh, when one is um, uh, uh, proven to have uh, taken a prohibited substance. It's, uh, 18 months is uh, the, the length of time that they are not allowed to compete. That's, that is what has happened in the past. Uh, there's been no uh, penalty imposed on Ben. Uh, one could only speculate what it might be. But this could end his career. Well, if he uh, is suspended for 18 months, uh, I don't think so, because uh, he's only 26. Uh, he's quite a ways ahead of the rest of the world right now, and I think that you know, uh, with proper training, he could come back and, and still you know, do very well. He was told, uh, if, you, if you could repeat this for me, you mentioned earlier that the substance that they found could only, wasn't in his body for long. Can you talk about that? Well, you know, I'm not a medical expert. It's just something that I heard and, you know, that um, what was found or what was discovered, uh, the steroid that was discovered, um, uh, is only in the system for about four or five days. It can only be detected for about four or five days. And I heard um, someone, uh, I'm not going to mention who, but... Uh, an official had indicated that whoever did this uh, knew what they were doing. But you're absolutely ruling out that he was on any steroids to help bring back the injury to 100% uh, uh, efficiency? Uh, absolutely was not on steroids. He has never taken drugs in his life. He was definitely not on steroids. The only thing that I can think of that could have happened was the exchange of the bottles. It's, it's the only thing that logically makes any sense. All right, that is Larry Heidebrecht, uh, an American agent, Ben Johnson's main agent. Chris Cuthbert, more on the bottles. I know people at home are saying right now, explain again. He takes a bottle to the stadium? I guess every athlete has their own little drink that they have uh, to help uh, keep the fluids in the body before a major race. And uh, Ben noticed before the race that his bottle had been changed. Now, when he came back after the race to the hotel, they looked at the bottle and according to Larry Heidebrecht, there was a, a yellowy substance in the bottom of the bottle, and they recognized that that couldn't have been Ben's, and they also cleaned out the bottle because they said it was a, a very pungent smell, and uh, that's why I asked, uh, are they, uh, are they, do they regret cleaning out the bottle? Instead, they could take it, perhaps, and get it tested, but uh, clearly, uh, the bottles were switched. At least, that is the story that the Johnson camp is going with. All right, uh, just at the news conference, and I know you didn't hear it, you were in transit from the Hilton Hotel, uh, they asked Caroline Lethard and Do Dr. Roger Jackson what Ben's reaction was. She said he was almost stunned, did not realize the, uh, the situation. What did Heidebrecht say about Ben's reaction or Charlie Francis's? Well, we, we don't know what Charlie Francis is feeling right now, but I think Ben really is, is, is stunned by it. Uh, uh, we saw some emotion from Heidebrecht, but he said that Ben really was, uh, was 
just stunned, confused by everything that had happened. Uh, Heidebrecht said it was either a mistake, a tragedy, or sabotage. And I think the latter is what the Johnson camp right now is suggesting happened. Where are the bottles, I mean, uh, that had the yellow substance? I know it's well, been washed, but... As I said, they cleaned it out, so there's nothing we can do about it. It's just a plastic bottle now, and we may never know. Heidebrecht say anything off camera, anything... Uh, I know he's stunned and shocked, but uh, you talked to him before the race. He had a great interview with him where he talked about the race being worth... What did he say to you, seven figures or something? Well, he said seven figures. He also said it would, was worth twice as much as the amount of money they've made since the World Championships. And uh, in other reports, it suggested they've made $2.5 million since the World's. So we might suggest it might be worth $5 million, but uh, all of a sudden, it's certainly not worth that much. All right, Heidebrecht appeared stunned. Thank you very much. Chris Cuthbert, who has just talked with his agent, uh, Ben Johnson's agent, Larry Heidebrecht. And again, the sad thing is, this has overshadowed the other Canadian athletes. Uh, Chris is uh, from Edmonton. Scotty Olson from Edmonton Fights. We will show you that. But right now, as we continue to stay on top of this story, let's take you back live to that press conference. Caroline Lethrin, the Canadian chef de mission, some of the doctors, track and field people, and there's Dr. Roger Jackson of the COA. Deliberations of them. Uh, they took a long time. I, I think it was almost two hours of deliberation. Um, so they must have had a lot to argue about or talk about. And uh, the conclusion was read to us about 2 o'clock this morning as to what they were prepared to recommend. So we have gone through the process that uh, has been stipulated. And uh, under the circumstances, um, I, can't, I can't really relate further to that. Question straight ahead. Certain uh, national Olympic bodies have a policy, such as Australia does, of an automatic life ban of, on athletes uh, who return positive tests in this way. And we saw two of our athletes uh, are subject to a life ban now. Uh, does Canada have such a policy, and would that mean that uh, Ben Johnson will never be able to compete in the Olympics again? The, the Canadian policy is that uh, we will review this case at a later date uh, upon our return. Uh, the athlete has the opportunity to have a hearing with the Canadian Olympic Association. Um, we, having heard that, uh, the views of the athlete or his representative will identify what penalty, if any, uh, we will impose. All I can tell you is that the most recent circumstances of, of doping incidents in Canada have resulted in a ban of individuals for the next Pan American and Olympic Games on the calendar. In other words, it would be a, f a ban four years from now for the next games. And our policy states specifically that if an individual is involved in two incidents concerning use or trafficking or whatever, uh, there's a lifetime ban after two uses. There is the possibility of a lifetime ban after the first use if we wish to impose that. But I've given you uh, a little bit of understanding of the tradition of the last few cases that we have looked at in Canada. So Canada's a lot softer on its athletes than other countries are. <laughs> I, well, if you say that there's an automatic first ban, uh, is, a, a lifetime is. ban in some countries, yes, that is, that is a slightly, well, that is a stronger position than is our current position. You must also appreciate that uh, the Government of Canada, which provides majority of funding for amateur sport, also has their penalties, which they Im impose, and if you're interested in reviewing those uh, with Mr. McCoskey or Ms. Hoffman, they're over to the right and the Canadian Track and Field and the International Federations also have their penalties. So there's, there's lots yet left uh, before this case is finished. Last two questions over here, please. Go ahead. I'm wondering if anyone, I'm wondering if anyone knows what the liquid was that was in Ben's personal water bottle that you say he carried. Can we assume that he drank it all and therefore it was impossible for you to test it to see if it had been tampered with? In fact, we have ample quantity left for analysis. And in fact, we turned over part of the product to the IOC for analysis, and we have a quantum for our own analysis. It's alleged to be a liquid syrupy material called sarsaparilla, which is a combination of herbs that is manufactured, if you will, in the West Indies. And so have you concluded then that it wasn't tampered with or it was tampered with? We, I beg your pardon, have we concluded that it has been tampered with? Is that what you're yes, suggesting? There seems to be a suggestion here that something happened after the race before doping to indicate 
wrongdoing? Well, Was fact, that liquid tampered with? In fact, we have no data for that. I'm just, I'm just suggesting to you that it has been reported to us by the coach and by their team doctor that, in fact, it is an herbal preparation. We have turned it over to the authorities for their analysis, which has not been done to date, and we have our own that we would return probably to our own labs in Canada. Okay. Last question, please. I'd like Bill Stanish and Roger Jackson to both answer this one. Are, are both of you individuals satisfied beyond a reasonable doubt that there was no tampering with that, or will you be making every possible effort to make sure that that uh, sarsaparilla sample is tested in Canada or any other investigations that can be done will be done? I would give way to the President. We, we do have the opportunity, I would suspect, with the IOC for them to analyze the sample. Uh, they have, as was indicated, been given it freely by our officials immediately upon the understanding of this uh, circumstance and the allegations given to us by Ben Johnson and Charlie Francis. They have apparently have, have this uh, sample sealed and, and protected. Whether or not they are prepared to perform the analysis is something that I can't, uh, can't determine. Uh, I'm still personally a little bit confused about the, um, the other remaining material because uh, there were other quantities back in the village uh, that this individual uh, would have access to to replenish the smaller bottle that, uh, uh, that he carried with him with his athletic gear. And I'm, I, I just can't answer the question uh, accurately at this particular point in time exactly what we're going to do in the future with this. We'll give consideration to it, but it wasn't possible during the short time frame that we had yesterday afternoon till this morning to... Uh... All right, that's the final answer at the news conference. We are going to break one hour for the National. The National, of course, is right on top of this story. We'll have more information coming up. It's followed by the Journal. When we come back in one hour, we will have more on the Ben Johnson tragedy. Also, it is a tragedy, some of the other athletes being overlooked. We will show you boxer Scotty Olson from Edmonton and Egerton Marcus from Toronto. I'm Brian Williams. So long from Seoul. We'll be back in one hour. The Games of the 24th Olympiad, brought to you by Coors Light, the right beer now, and by Hyundai, cars that make sense. CBC Television, Canada's Olympic Network. Bag for you. Thanks. Your champagne? Ah, perfect. And your menu? Three entrees. Wonderful. Sir? Mm hmm Here's your lobster thermidor. Terrific. Thank you. Either of the red or white wines? Ah, uh, the poulet fuissé. Very good. I'll be back with the dessert trolley in just a moment. Fine. A liqueur with your coffee? Ah, uh, the XO cognac, please. Certainly. Red Lobster presents Party Platters to Go. When you're watching the Summer Olympics, pick up platters of shrimp and crab claws ready to go in one hour. Great for any party, any time. Red Lobster for the seafood lover in you. It's Red Lobster's Seafood Feasts. Nine bountiful dishes from just $8.95. And the ultimate feast, crab, shrimp, and rock lobster tail for a limited time only. Red Lobster for the seafood lover in you. Oh, that club said, where well, are you on the star? You get the lowest price, so jump in your car. Reward yourself with a new barbecue. Just for fighting all the things that you do. Down at Club said, everything points to free. You could even get yourself a car on TV. Points to free. Down at Club said, points to free. Down at Club said, points to free. Welcome to Club Zed. Only at Zellers. For the lowest price is the law. Membership is free, and every time you buy something, you get a reward. Valuable Club Z points. They automatically add up. Toothpaste can get you a granddaddy clock. Laundry detergent could get you luggage. Get the points that you save. Get a granddaddy clock or a free microwave. Points for free. Club Z. Only at Zeller, where the lowest price is the law. Dollar Club Z points for free. Dollar Club Z points for free. Everything points for free.